thing that actually blew my mind was how easy it is to make dry salt cured olives. Everybody, I'm gonna be sharing what I learned last week at the olive curing workshop I attended at Mount Zero Olives Warehouse in Sunshine West Melbourne. I'm just gonna set up my tripod somewhere here. I kind of like where I was standing before. But um, anyway, this workshop, we learned the two main methods for curing olives. We've got the fermentation and brine, which is the most commonly used one. And then we also have the dry salt curing. And I'll tell you more about Mount Zero later, um, but the workshop was being led by Richard Seymour, whose family founded and still runs Mount Zero Olives. So he knows a thing or two about olives. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I had a massive backyard olive olive harvest this year so i wanted to learn from the best so for the fermentation and brine richard weighed the olives um on a scale and then dumped them into a food grade container that's what's going to be used for the brining and it just so happens that his fancy bucket has a cute little mesh that sits right on top that helps collect any growth um in the brine over the many months that it's going to brine this isn't necessary but it definitely helps um, so he added the olives, they were about 5 kilos of olives and he tends to go for a ratio of 60% olives to 40% brine. Um, you can just do 50-50, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. And the brine was 10% salt, so for every litre of water he added 100 grams of uh, salt. It's just normal rock salt, he did say that you can use um, table salt, but I always prefer to use sea salt when it comes to things like brining and pickling because you don't want any um, caking agent or any, any of that stuff that you can find uh, in iodized salt. The other thing that um, Richard adds to the brine is some vinegar, you can add some lemon juice or anything to drop the pH to about 4. pH or the acidity to be um, ideally below 4 or around 4 uh, for it to be in a perfect condition to ferment uh, lactobacillus culture and not ferment something else. He did have a fancy pH meter that helped him uh, know when it was about four, around the four pH mark. It's really easy to calculate this. I actually just jumped on ChatGPT GPT, and you can put in like how to achieve a pH four uh, of using vinegar of 8% of vinegar 6 and kind of wing it as long as you have about 100 grams of salt per one liter of water you're sitting around the 10% mark you could use a hydrometer if you want and you can usually get those from anywhere that sell like the um, brew it yourself kits the home brewery kits um, or like the hardware stores I'm I've purchased a device on Amazon which have, hasn't arrived yet I think it arrives after tomorrow it's a five-in-one meter probe uh it was around 25 dollars i think and it helps read the ph the salinity some other stuff that i don't really need but those are the two that i wanted for my olive curing season this year and then for the future ones hopefully and once the brine was ready rich just poured that over the olives and set the sieve in place and covered it up loosely so you don't completely cover it because fermentation process is going to create bubbles as the sugar is broken down sugar that's present in, naturally present in the olives so you want to leave a bit of space in the lid for that gas to kind of get released get released um, yeah that's so easy and rich doesn't change the brine there's some methods that call for changing it once a month things like that but very simple very straightforward and these olives should be ready in about three months. You can give them a taste every now and then and see if you want to keep them for longer or not. And then once they're ready to eat, once you're happy with the way that they fermented, you can pop them in a jar. You can um, add like wedges of lemon if you want or chili. And then you can cover it with a fresh brine or you can use the one that you've used for fermentation, but it tends to be, tends to get a bit cloudy. So, it is preferred to use a clean brine and you can store them in the fridge um, or you can just eat them, store them in a jar outside and enjoy them. They might still continue to ferment a little bit, but that's just like added flavor. Cool. Also, before I forget, if you have any questions olive related, I'm gonna try my best to answer as many as I can. So leave them down below in the comment section. The thing that actually blew my mind was how easy it is 
to make dry salt cured olives and you can eat them in as as little as just two weeks was incredible and it's not something that we see a lot in Lebanese culture um, I grew up with my mom and grandma mainly uh, using the fermentation and brine method let me know down below in the comments if you've tried curing your olives before or what methods you use or what methods your family uses Lebanese relatives Greek relatives um, Palestinian Jordanian so I love learning about all of the different ways that they've cured olives over the years here's how simple it is you grab a cloth bag a nice clean one preferably only catch here is that they have to be the very ripe black or purple olives um, the green olives this method won't work because they're just not ripe enough for the process so yep yeah, ripe olives equal parts olive equal parts of olives and salt that's it you put them in a bag tie it up you just basically shake it through you can um, tie a knot in it um, hang it somewhere not over your favorite rug or anything like that because it'll start dripping um, essentially the salt will start drawing the moisture out of the, um, the olives. Or you can rest it on like a sieve with a bowl underneath. But either way, you want to have something underneath the bag to catch any of the juice that's going to be dripping as the salt extracts and dries that water from the olives. The only thing that you have to do is give the bag like a shake every so often, two times a day, three times a day. Uh, yeah, two weeks. We'll see how we go. So we got to taste some of the olives from the previous season, both the salt dry salt cured and the fermentation and brine but what blew my mind oh my goodness we got to taste we got to taste early harvest olive oil that was pressed only two days prior to that event so guys it was green green like i'm gonna share a video right now insert video and the flavor oh, it was like like freshly cut grass i don't know if you can imagine just how like fresh that would be and unripened green tomatoes kind of like that oh so good so good what was also amazing is that the workshop was part of these frequently held market days where you can come past with your empty containers from home and stock up on your favorite products that they that they stock uh, including like the olive oils and grains and coffee it's such a lovely concept to help minimize um, packaging waste and i think they save about a thousand containers every market day we get to go and taste the product and choose which ones you want to fill up your jars with and they've got different um uh, vendors for like fresh bread and there was like a koji stand and a soap stand homemade soap using the olive oil from mount zero olives so it was an incredible experience for me as well it was my first time there you can sign up to the newsletter and you can stay updated to um when the next market day is going to be i also ended up getting this beautiful yuzu infused olive oil which is stunning super super fragrant uh, i ended up using it in an olive oil cake recipe uh, I posted that on Instagram so you can check it out there. It is absolutely delicious. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And a special thank you to Mount Zero for letting me uh, attend and record the workshop. It was an amazing experience, and I'm glad I got to share it with you.